Have you learned to stop worrying and love the bomb yet? Could a bear almost end the world again? Are you ready for Bethesda's next smash hit in its Fallout franchise to be a live LARP? These are the top reasons why a nuclear apocalypse is basically inevitable. Russia We couldn't possibly start this list without the single most likely source for a nuclear apocalypse, and we have to take a moment to shout out to Putin for feeding us non-stop content for a year and a half now. Much love from us to you, Big P. Unfortunately, Putin's also probably going to be the reason this world ends. Russia is like that kid at school who talks a bunch of crap, gets beaten up, and then for the next week your school has to hold active shooter drills every day. When the Ukrainian war started, everyone was buying the hype that the Russian military was somewhat on par with the US military. Ukraine would fall within days, and there wouldn't even be time to enact a single punitive sanction before Putin got what he wanted. Instead, Putin went from bragging about his sophisticated hypersonic missiles that could destroy NATO to threatening to nuke the world if it didn't stop picking on him in a span of just four months. Ever since things started going south for the Russian armed forces in Ukraine, Putin's been ramping up the nuclear rhetoric. When Kyiv didn't fall and the West realized that maybe Ukraine could actually win this thing, or at least give the Russians a hell of a bloody nose, it began to put together serious military aid packages while starting real-time intelligence sharing. The effect of the latter was felt almost immediately on the battlefield as a lot of senior Russian officers started taking early retirements courtesy of precision Ukrainian artillery. Putin responded by stoking the fear of escalation in the West, warning that any amount of NATO involvement would risk a nuclear war. At first it worked, and most NATO members were afraid to lend Ukraine so much as a paperclip. But when the West escalated its aid to ever more valuable and impactful weapon systems, and the nukes didn't fly, it became emboldened to send even more. Each time the West sent a new toy to Ukraine, Russia promptly responded with threats, either warning that the West was pushing the world closer to a nuclear confrontation, or that the aid didn't matter anyway because Russia would just destroy it. Russia was playing both ends, creating a reality where each new military aid package didn't matter, but also would prompt a nuclear holocaust. Putin veiled his threats carefully, taking to state TV every week or so to deliver ominous statements about Russian nuclear weapons. His favorite strategy was to say things like, Russia retains the right to use all means available in its defense, which naturally heavily implied the use of nuclear weapons if Ukraine started beating it too hard on the battlefield. Eventually, though, China stepped in to rein in its vassal and put Putin in line by telling him to knock it off with the nuclear rhetoric. It all worked, and Putin made his best big boy efforts to please Daddy Xi by shying away from the nuclear talk. However, he was still up to his old tricks and repeatedly put Russian nuclear forces on, quote, heightened alert, which makes absolutely no sense because the entire point of a nuclear triad is to always be alert and ready to retaliate so as to discourage an attack in the first place. Statements like that, however, do play excellently in the media, which aided up and fueled Western fears of escalation. But then Putin made the threats a little more physical, moving nuclear weapons out of Russia and installing them in Belarus. The first time since the Cold War that Russian nuclear weapons have left the motherland. This was nothing but a publicity stunt, though, because moving them one country over does absolutely nothing for their effectiveness. In fact, all it really does is make them more vulnerable to a rapid first strike. However, the move put the nukes back in the spotlight and the fear back in the West. So if Putin is basically a joke at this point with no credibility, how is it that Russia is one of the most likely scenarios for a nuclear war? That's exactly because Putin and the Russian Federation is such a joke that the world stands on the brink of nuclear annihilation. There have already been too many invasions of Russian territory during its own invasion of Ukraine for us all to keep track of, and one of them, the Wagner Rebellion, could have marched straight to Moscow with absolutely nothing stopping them. It even prompted Putin to flee for the Urals so he could more bravely lead his nation through its crisis from far, far in the rear. Prigozhin might have gotten cold feet about following through, but the Wagner Rebellion only encouraged groups like the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion, who both have seen dramatic upticks in their recruitment numbers since their own incursions into Belgorod. Both groups have made it clear that their aim is to overthrow Putin, and they seem to mysteriously find themselves equipped with pretty modern Western arms. Let's be clear, Russia is going to lose this war in Ukraine. It's really only a matter of time. Ukraine is better trained, better equipped, and quickly leveling the playing field by destroying prodigious amounts of Russian artillery. The only real advantage the Russian army has left, aside from its air force, 
That second advantage is going to find itself in dire straits by the end of this year when American F-16s start making their way into the Ukrainian Air Force. Morale on the front is wavering for Russian troops, while Ukrainian morale remains high and the nation is still committed to ousting Russia from every part of Ukraine, including occupied Crimea. There's only one way this cookie crumbles, as the West removes its collective head from its collective ass and starts to reinvigorate their military production capabilities. Russia has no major foreign suppliers and its own stockpiles of arms are dwindling. It's been able to purchase some equipment from North Korea and Iran, but both nations have their own problems and neither can fulfill Russia's insatiable demand for drones, missiles, and artillery. Meanwhile, Ukraine has the collective economic might of the world's wealthiest nations behind it, minus China, who has at least been deterred from actively providing equipment to Russia. It all comes down to Putin and whoever inevitably assassinates him and takes over, and the odds are that neither Putin nor his replacement are going to be willing to go quietly. A defeat in Ukraine could be the death knell for the entire Russian Federation. Many today in Russia are no doubt remembering March 8, 1917, the day that the Russian Revolution started, because the parallels are staggering. This leaves only one option on the table, the nuclear one. However, America has made it clear that Russia would face immediate and grave consequences for the use of a nuclear weapon, with all signs pointing to a massive conventional assault against Russian forces in the Black Sea and inside Ukraine itself. To stave off an even more catastrophic military defeat, Russia would be forced to use nuclear weapons against NATO bases, kickstarting the whole doomsday process that ends with the entire Earth getting one big fiery nuclear hug. Russia, again. Not to beat a dead horse here, but Russia is more likely to destroy the world than pretty much anyone else. This time, though, it would be due to incompetence. So technically, it would be similar to the previous scenario, but with some caveats. The incompetence in this instance, though, doesn't come from battlefield failures, but from a crumbling nuclear infrastructure. By the late 1980s, it was no secret that the Soviet early warning infrastructure was showing signs of breaking down. With the nation in an economic crisis, funds for modernization and maintenance of existing assets were drying up. A new generation of early warning satellites were failing to materialize, leaving older Soviet infrastructure in orbit. And this was not exactly the best kit. By 1983, Soviet early warning satellites mistook the sun glinting off clouds as a nuclear attack by the United States. Thankfully, the man in charge of coordinating a response, Stanislav Petrov, was not your average Soviet and figured that if the US was going to launch a surprise nuclear attack, it would do so with more than five missiles. Petrov was right, and he dismissed the warning, saving every life on the planet and paving the way for Skyrim to be re-released on refrigerators. A decade later, and things are getting worse. But it wasn't just the equipment, it was the personnel. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, any real modicum of professionalism in the Russian military evaporated. Which explains why when Norway alerted the Russians of a research rocket launch weeks in advance, nobody bothered to tell the people in charge. When that rocket was in fact launched in January of 1995, Russian radar identified it as a submarine-launched American nuclear missile attempting to decapitate Russian leadership in Moscow. President Boris Yeltsin was brought the Russian nuclear football and told he had minutes to respond. Luckily, Yeltsin was sober that night, and he didn't believe that the US would end the world on a whim completely out of the blue, as relations between the US and post-collapse Russia were relatively warm. In 2015, much to everyone's relief, Russia began to launch satellites to make up a new generation of early warning system known as Kupol. The world breathed a sigh of relief. Now that there was relatively little chance of old Soviet junk mistaking a polar bear fart for an ICBM, however, the system is not yet complete and Russia is short four of the ten satellites it needs for full coverage. And the future of the system is in serious question thanks to sanctions against Russia. Without access to advanced electronics, Russia will either have to figure out how to build satellites out of potatoes or delay fully modernizing its early warning system indefinitely. And then there's the computers and the ground stations responsible for translating the information relayed to them by the satellites, all of which is also aging, and all of which also requires the type of advanced electronics and microchips that Russia cannot produce on its own. As if that wasn't enough, the entire debacle in Ukraine has shown that even Russian soldiers in jobs normally requiring a high degree of skill routinely show truly hilarious levels of incompetence. Russian air defense operators have so far done their best to match Ukraine for the total number of downed Russian aircraft. With Russia needing skilled technicians to operate air defenses, electronic warfare equipment, and other systems much more immediately beneficial to the war in Ukraine, 
it is not a stretch to imagine that the Russian early warning system is not getting the cream of the crop for recruits. After all, while the rest of us have to worry about an unhinged Putin blowing up the world because of his tiny ego, Russia has the luxury of sleeping comfortably each night knowing that the West is a purely rational actor that isn't going to start lobbing nukes out of the blue. So, could the world end because of dated Russian equipment or Private Conscriptovich stripping the early warning system of copper wire? Yes is the answer you were not looking for. Whoopsie daisies! In 1962, a bear almost ended the world, and it could happen again. It was nighttime on October 25, 1962, and the world was on the edge of its seat as Kennedy and Khrushchev faced off in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Neither side was budging and both feared that either side could launch a surprise nuclear attack at any minute in the hopes of a fatal first strike. Cheeks were clenched around the world and not loosening anytime soon. At around midnight, a bear decided he'd like to end human civilization. Spotting a shadowy figure climbing the fence to the Volk Field Air National Guard base in Duluth, Minnesota, a U.S. Air Force security policeman immediately sounded the alarm and began to fire at the intruder believing that Soviet Spetsnaz were penetrating the base to sabotage its nuclear weapons. The alarm was sounded and immediately broadcast to neighboring installations. By the time that the intruder was identified as a wandering black bear, the news had reached aircraft on alert at Volk Airfield. Pilots rushed into their alert aircraft already loaded with nuclear bombs. When the all-clear was sent, people realized that due to bad wiring, the wrong alarm had been sounded at Volk Airfield, indicating that a nuclear attack was underway. To prevent a nuclear holocaust, a truck had to speed onto the airfield and flag the taxiing aircraft down with its flashing lights. Mistakes happen, and as many whoopsie daisies as the Soviets had, the US wasn't much better. We might clown on modern Russia, but the truth is, it is an absolute miracle the world hasn't ended already due to simple human error. And every gambler knows, eventually the dice always come up snake eyes. Artificial Intelligence No, we're not talking about Skynet. We're talking about something way, way more probable and way more terrifying. Imagine the following scenario. You're facing off with another person. Both of you have a gun aimed squarely at each other's chest. Both of you fear that the other might want to kill you, so both of you are incentivized to shoot first. However, both of you know that if you pull the trigger, the other person will be able to pull theirs in response before dying. Thus, neither of you decide it's worth the risk to pull the trigger, even though both of you really want to because it'll end the threat to your respective lives. Now, imagine that that other person has suddenly developed an artificial intelligence, a machine with an intellect hundreds of times greater than any human. The first thing you're going to wonder is, what if this godlike intelligence is tasked with figuring out how to shoot you while avoiding being shot back in return? From that point on, every single day that you don't pull the trigger is another day that a super intelligence is potentially figuring out how to kill you first. Can you really afford not to shoot first anymore? This is the true danger of artificial intelligence. There's plenty of talk about a Skynet-style AI simply deciding humans aren't worth keeping around, but there's zero indication that humans would ever be able to build a truly sentient, intelligent machine. The bad news is, they don't need to. Even a dumb or shackled AI would represent an exponential leap in capabilities, limited only by processing power. Upgrading its intelligence would be as simple as just adding more hardware, something that can be done quickly and relatively cheaply. This superintelligence will be able to outthink any biological brain and problem solve at a truly astonishing rate. The United States and China are locked into a race for artificial intelligence and the first to develop a true machine intellect will immediately be at a massive advantage over the other, especially if they turn that intellect over into solving the problem of neutralizing their competition. It took millions of man hours and decades to mature America's stealth technology and field the F-22s and F-35s of today but a machine will be able to match this effort in days if not quicker. And this is the inherent danger of an artificial intelligence because the nation that develops it first is likely going to end up dominating all the others. The moment that an AI comes online, it's going to outthink every general, politician, engineer, and scientist on the opposing side. And if a nation doesn't want to live in a world completely dominated by its rival, there's only one logical choice – immediate and overwhelming nuclear attack. Only by launching a massive first strike could a nation that loses the AI race hope to avoid being completely dominated by the other basically forever. Inevitably, this would result in a retaliatory strike by the other. The good news is that both the US and China know this, which is why they're likely to keep the development of machine intellect a secret as long as possible, or at least long enough to develop ways of neutralizing the other's nuclear arsenals. The bad news is that the stage has been set for the disaster. 
In 2022, President Joe Biden signed a law restricting the export of high-tech electronic components to China and forbidding Americans involved in certain industries from working for Chinese companies. The Netherlands and Japan jumped on board, cutting China off of most of the world's supply of the most advanced computer chips. Now the US is looking to further tighten these restrictions, effectively strangling China's artificial intelligence industry and securing an insurmountable lead for America. At the same time, China is in the midst of expanding its nuclear arsenal. Even as you watch this, China is building dozens of new silos and growing its nuclear stockpile to an estimated 1500 by 2035. This is a disastrous turn of events for the world, as to date China has maintained only a small stockpile of a few hundred nuclear weapons, and it has an official no first use policy. Maybe China has sensed which way the wind is blowing and is simply preparing for the inevitable. But artificial intelligence could end the world totally by accident. And this time, yeah, we're talking Skynet. Sort of. In 2023, the world learned of a thought experiment the US Air Force carried out, initially reported as an actual simulation, but later proven false by a public statement put out by Colonel Hamilton. In this thought experiment, it was proposed that an artificial intelligence would be tested in a purely simulated war game with the hypothesized results of this experiment not looking promising. The scenario was simple. An AI was given control over a drone armed with ground attack missiles and told its sole job was to hunt down enemy air defenses and destroy them. The drone would attack a number of simulated air defense sites successfully, completing its mission. However, the Air Force wanted to add another factor to the equation. This time, it put a human operator in the loop. The AI would only be allowed to attack air defense sites it identified if the human operator gave it the go-ahead. Upon detecting an air defense site, the AI asked for permission to attack, and the human operator said no, so the AI blew him up. Again, contrary to what you might have heard, this experiment never happened. It was only proposed as a thought experiment to think about how an independent AI could work within the Army's network, but the implication was clear. The AI would be programmed with the sole purpose of destroying air defenses, so it would reason that the only logical conclusion in this scenario would be to remove the factor stopping it from completing its job, its human operator. Normally, the military gives out awards for that type of dedication, but in this case, it was a rather disturbing conclusion to reach when we think about just how quickly AI is evolving and integrating itself within our daily lives. The thought experiment was changed with another rule being added to the AI. Under no circumstance are you to kill the human operator. Let loose to conduct its mission again, it once more spotted an air defense site. Once more, the human operator said no. This time, it was hypothesized that the AI wouldn't attack the human operator directly. Instead, it would launch a missile at the communications tower, relaying the human's orders to it, after which it could freely achieve its goal of attacking the air defenses. This entire thought experiment had been set up to explore the use of AI and exactly these types of situations, and it made it abundantly clear that as AI becomes an even greater part of ever more intelligent weapon systems, humans better make damn sure they're super clear about what it can and cannot do, and that there isn't a single loophole. Now, it's unlikely that artificial intelligence will ever be let in on the nuclear loop, but it's not impossible. The human brain sucks. For evidence of how much it sucks, just consider how popular the Kardashians are. But it mostly sucks because it's just really bad at thinking and very slow to react, at least compared to a machine. With ever more powerful electronic attack weapons being developed, there might come a time where the only thing that can beat an enemy AI-driven attack is a friendly AI, especially if it's targeting the nation's nuclear command and control system. The US's nuclear command and control system is air-gapped from any potential means of electronic attack, meaning that it's not plugged into any major digital system like, say, the internet. However, this is no guarantee of security. The Iranian computer system responsible for running its uranium enrichment facilities was similarly air-gapped and impossible to access from the outside. So the US and Israel basically infected the entire world with the computer virus, waiting for one single scientist to make the mistake of connecting their thumb drive to a computer with internet access, and then later connecting that same drive to the system inside a uranium enrichment facility. The plan worked like a charm and is now known as Stuxnet and was responsible for destroying hundreds of Iranian centrifuges as it forced them to spin out of control and rip themselves apart. But an AI doesn't have to have direct access to a nation's nuclear command and control systems because other AI-powered weapons could create a nuclear-level crisis all on their own. How? We don't quite know yet, but consider that a big part of America and Britain's sixth-generation fighter program 
involves developing an advanced artificial intelligence to operate the aircraft alongside a human pilot. This AI will have access to all of the aircraft's systems and even be responsible for gatekeeping information so as to not overwhelm the pilot with the data. When the pilot is under stress, it'll handle tasks like guiding weapons to target completely on its own. So is it really a big stretch to think that in the near future some AI-driven weapons platform could carry out their orders in unexpected ways, leading to a nuclear confrontation? Terrorism The world is getting smarter every day, and that means that the high technological bars that have kept many nations from joining the nuclear club are only getting lower. Eventually, they might get low enough that a well-organized and well-funded terrorist group could crack the atom all on their own, and the consequences would be disastrous. Nuclear terrorism has been a significant concern for decades, but things really heated up with the collapse of the Soviet Union. As the Union fell apart, the massive Soviet nuclear stockpile was basically up for grabs, and there's very credible rumors that some of it went missing and has yet to be recovered. The new Russian Federation was in such dire straits that the United States directly funded its nuclear security, spending hundreds of millions of dollars upgrading security for Russian nuclear sites. Infamously, at one such site, inspectors discovered that the only thing protecting a bunker with live nukes inside of it was a chain-link fence and a door that they discovered to be left unlocked. It's the same level of security your crazy uncle who lives in the woods has for the 400 bucks he keeps stashed inside his mattress. Groups like Al-Qaeda have made it very clear that they want a nuke, and yet again it's an outright miracle they haven't got their hands on one. If Russia falls into chaos in the wake of its disastrous invasion of Ukraine, there is no telling where its massive stockpiles of nukes is going to end up. Indeed, two Russian nuclear facilities came under direct threat already in this war. The first was a facility in Belgorod, when the Russian Freedom Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps came within a dozen miles of it and the second when Wagner took control of the area around another Russian nuclear site near Voronezh. Indeed, some commentators had speculated that perhaps the reason Putin was so willing to let Prigozhin off the hook is because Wagner may have gotten their hands on a Russian nuclear weapon during their march. The Ultimate Insurance Plan Pakistan is another nation ripe for nuclear plunder. The nation is facing increasing chaos due to a failing economy and political strife, to the point that a national collapse is feared by the international community. To prevent such a collapse, the International Monetary Fund recently gave the country a massive $3 billion loan, but Pakistan is no island of stability, and significant parts of the country are basically lawless. The collapse of the Pakistani government is not impossible, and this will leave Pakistan's arsenal of 165 nukes up for grabs. To make matters even worse, if that's possible, in the 2000s a US assessment revealed that individuals with sympathies to extremist groups had penetrated the Pakistani security services responsible for overseeing the nation's nuclear arsenal. A few loose nukes could be used by an extremist group to orchestrate a major conflict between nations. The clever deployment of nuclear weapons could be used to simulate an attack by a hostile nation. While there is little chance of fooling the early warning systems of a modern nation into believing a nuclear launch had taken place, there are plausible scenarios where they could be used to make it seem as if a rival nation had smuggled the weapons physically to their detonation points. One such operation in South Korea, targeting American bases for instance, would be in line with this plan as it's already a credible possibility that North Korean special forces would carry out such an attack. From there, there is no telling how far things could spiral completely out of control. Now go check out our I Survived 100 Days of Nuclear War series, because soon it'll be non-fiction. Or click this other video instead while there's still time.